hello and welcome everyone to episode number two of Grinded Apex Legends, where I have a look at games that I am utterly terrible at, and I see how far I can get in just a couple of months of work. So, in today's episode, we are going to have a look at the winner's POV of the LG SNA Championships, and uh, we're going to be listening into their comms and going to be talking about what I can observe in those replays. Now, I wanted to talk about replays in general just a little bit. Um, so in the Overwatch time, I used replays heavily to understand what I'm doing wrong and how I can take myself to the next level. So usually there is this point, right, where you start to really struggle to to get up there, right? There is there is usually this point that... Uh, you know, from, 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 let's say, the lowest ranks to, like, the middle ranks, you are kind of have, are going to have a decent time at climbing, right? Because most of the basic stuff is just, like, you just get better at the basic, right? You just get better at clicking at the enemy and stuff. But after that is done, stuff can be a little bit difficult. And it can also not only be difficult, but it can also be a little bit confusing. And maybe you have a different idea of how the game is supposed to be played than it currently is played. And so you might just be out of sync with the game and just might be, you know, just on, on, on another level for later on. But, very important, to kind of compare wh what you're doing to what your team, what, what your... Um, what your enemies are doing or what the highest elo players are doing, kind of figure out what they're doing better than you and what it is that you need to improve on. And maybe, you know, figure out also where what, what, what your strengths are. Maybe you already have like some stuff figured out that you're doing pretty well, right? Maybe your your rotations are on a good level or, you know, your understanding generally of the game is pretty good, your timing's pretty good, but, you know, some things need some work. Odds are your aim might be pretty good, right? This is, I think, the most common thing is, like, the aim's already pretty good, but the rest is kind of lacking behind. And this is why you want to watch replays. Now, it's very important to not necessarily watch your own replays because it can be kind of difficult to find your own mistakes if you haven't checked another p point of view. So this is why I believe that it's very important to, first of all, check out someone else, kind of see what they're doing, and then you can kind of compare, okay? Now, the important part is... Of course, you need situations, right? You need a specific situation, and then you can kind of look for streamers, right? You look through streams, look through the situations, and you just actively think about, okay, what would I do here? What would I do here, right? So a good example is uh, your streamer hears a shot, right? And they turn around, and they see an enemy team. And uh, they see them, I don't know, somewhere too far away. It doesn't really matter. Now, you think to yourself, okay... This situation, you can even pause, you think, think to yourself, okay, this situation, what would I do? Okay, and this is something that I, I like to do, and then, and then you kind of do this, like, quiz thing, right? You're like, okay, I, I would do this, 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 okay, kind of try to play like this, okay? And then you see the thing happening, and you're like, oh, duh, there is, you know, a, a much better position behind me or something, and, and then you can kind of, like, figure this out but you have to be honest with yourself and this is very important your goal has to be to not watch this replay to preserve your ego okay your goal kind of has to be to stick your own face in the mud and tell yourself what you're doing wrong it's it's not about you know just okay yeah so i watched my replays and it's just dude i just couldn't win like obviously right my dude i i put this dude my team is so incompetent like don't talk about your team okay what could you have done? Okay, so with that said, I want to go through a little bit of a checklist of things, right? And number one of these things is what is the implicit stuff? So in pro play, you're going to see this a lot. In pro play, they have kind of the idea. And I think we're going to start the, you know, drop because I don't think that the looting part is going to be super interesting. So we'll kind of just drop everyone in. And uh, so in the beginning, what you'll be noticing is everyone that, us is pretty much on you know, it might be, so be it might be... Uh, a little bit confusing to watch a replay first because it is very difficult to find what you're looking for maybe even if you have their comms right you don't really know what they're talking about you're, they're not really talking about necessary stuff they're like talking about i don't know weird stuff just only the positions now this is very important right is that these guys have an implicit playbook which you have to figure out it is not actually for you to uh, figure out what they're talking about necessarily 
most of the time you want to figure out what the implicit stuff is that they do without saying it, okay? So, for example, they talk about rotations, right? If they say, okay, I want to go there, I want to go there, there is a reason to that, okay? They don't want to go into a certain position because they like that spot. They want to go there because it gives them an advantage or it works with their weapons or it works with their abilities or it works in this certain situation. A lot of things are very important here, right? And things that in Apex Legends and in Battle Royals generally you can watch out for is loot table, okay? So this dependent. Loot table objectives, which in this case is just the circle and predictability of the circle. And then also, and this is kind of team comp and what you're kind of trying to achieve. Now, as, as we as we are looking at the game and as we're looking at the looting here, um, as expected, there's not too much going on. If you guys were expecting a 20 kill kill game here from the winner's POV, I have to tell you, I'm sorry, that is not going to be happening. You guys should go over to SU's um, solo hue uh, streams. But, uh, you know, this, this, these guys are playing competitive, very slow, very tactical. You can also tell by the choice of weapons here. We have a G7 scout and a wingman coming in. That wingman might even be changed because, you know, it's G7 scout, wingman, they kind of do the same job. You want a shotgun maybe to supplement the G7 scout's slight weakness in the close quarters combat, okay? And later on, there is going to be a lot of close quarters combat. When it comes to close quarters combat, obviously the wingman is going to be a little bit better because of that strafe speed. However, the uh, the G7 scout has much better mid to long range capabilities. And as we have all the entire game in front of us, they're probably going to go for a G7 scout. And we see him actually switch out to the peacekeeper here. A uh, very interesting choice of shotgun. I personally am absolutely horrible with this shotgun, but apparently people seem to uh, seem to know how to pilot this baby a little bit better in the highest of elos, which is not very which is not very surprising. Uh, he, this is something that you will notice with high elo play, is that the weapons uh, are very different from the solo queue weapons, right? Because the, these weapons, you don't really need this weapon to deal super high DPS in that moment, in that second, all the time, right? You want this weapon to be able to spam damage onto mid to long range targets. You want it to be able to do good tracking damage, but it doesn't have to be insanely fast, okay? For the super short range situations, we have a PK, and we see that one of these loot bins here to the left-hand side has been looted, okay? And also, I just want to tell you guys, look how close these guys are sticking to each other, okay? Very different from our other teams is these guys are in a little ball, okay? So we see the call going out. Okay, there's an enemy team here, and this is a very bad position. I want to talk about this position a little bit. The small house got dominated by the big house and the choke behind them. They're kind of caught in a, you know, whammy of a bad position and they can absolutely get destroyed. Now, we don't see them bubble here. They are not waiting for their bubble with a Valkyrie ult. But as we see the Gibby jumping down, I'm pretty sure that the Val Valkyrie is going to follow. And there we have it, the Valkyrie ult to get them out of this situation. And you will see that uh, there are two teams spamming them with damage, okay? There's a right-hand team in this choke. In this choke, in high elos, you can always expect a team to sit there because usually... If they don't have a Valkyrie ult, they are probably going to die. So, talking about this situation there, they, without the Valkyrie ult, they had one option, and that is to beat one of the teams in a straight-up push, which usually is going to be very difficult. So, Valkyrie is insanely, insanely good for repositioning and for rotations that are long-range rotations, like this one, right? And uh, so now we see them try to capture a building here. Not notable, they all healed up. They kind of got into a position, kind of sa secured that position for a second, healed up, picked up the traps again, and then pushed into the building. Now we see them on the second floor here. I would love to see a rotation to the third floor, if that is possible, as they are quite exposed here. But, you know, we'll see. We'll see what ends up happening. However, um, I want to talk about, like, the, the options when it comes to mobility legends. Now we have different mobility legends, and different legends are good in different situations. So you have the uh, you have the Wraith, for example. Wraith is very good in a dominated spot. Wraith can clutch very, very well. 
but Wraith doesn't have the vertical nor the horizontal mobility of most other legends that are considered movement legends, right? She can portal out, but she has to precede, she has to split up from her team, and this makes her kind of vulnerable, even though she has an invulnerability. Then you have Pathfinder with his zipline, which is pretty good, but it can't go straight up, and it also has the limitation of having something to, you know, basically be connected to. So uh, it is more predictable, slower, and, very important, you have quite a bit of control as you move on the zipline, right? So this is something that, uh, compared to other legends you will see in a second, is very different, right? So looking at the Octane, you can kind of air strafe a little bit and you have the double jump, which is pretty nice, but generally you're going in an arc, very predictable, very easy to shoot at. Octane, he is very good in skirmishes, he's very good in quick combat, you know, stuff like that, but he is not going to be super good in a situation like what we found our uh, protagonists in there for a second, where they're caught in a small house and they have two teams, one choke, one other team, basically just looking at them and seeing if they can sandwich them and kill them, okay? And uh, Octane is not going to be very good in that situation, Definitely not in comparison to the Valkyrie, okay? The Valkyrie, absolutely lovely in that situation, and Valkyrie generally very good as long as there is a little bit of protection at the base. And this is also why our favorite hero, Jibby, once again applies. Jibby is always good. J Jibby, Jibby interacts with most of the mechanics in the game in a positive way, and uh, usually he works together with almost every team, uh, with almost every character in a team as well. So Gibby and Wraith, very good. Gibby and Pathfinder, I wouldn't say they have the best synergy out there, but, you know, there is some synergy. Gibby versus stuff like Valkyrie, obviously insane. Gibby versus stuff like uh, other Gibbies or Bengas, Bangalores or stuff like that, absolutely insane. Gibby with a Valkyrie, insane. Why? Because you can basically shield yourself from long-range snipe as that Valkyrie is channeling her ultimate and burning in until she can, you know, burn out and get you guys in the air and then at that point you're kind of predictable but you are very far up so it's going to be very difficult to hit you. Now what we can see here is you can see them use the scout to the full potential. They're just sitting around trying to spam each other and trying to evolve their shields and trying to win a little bit of a war of attrition versus the rest of the world, okay? So, uh, a bit of an unfortunate situation that you can find yourself in, but, you know, this game is going to be pretty stale until the th last ring, pretty much. Because uh, this stuff is not going to be, you know, they're not going to be forced. For a while, they've found a pretty decent situation, even though they got into a very hairy situation there with the house and the team in the choke. They managed to get themselves into a pretty safe house here. You know, they're, they're doing good, eliminating some sidelines. And, uh, oh, you can see, okay. You can see that there is a team fight going on. Okay, that the, yeah, this is a bubble going out. And this Gibby team now is in a very bad spot, okay? They do not have a lot of protections. They don't have a lot of options to rotate here. And uh, worst thing of all, they have 20 teams looking at them and trying to, uh, well, 19 teams looking at them <laughs> and trying to snag a kill or at least an assist or do some damage or upgrade their armor, okay? So uh, these guys are obviously an absolutely lovely target because what? why would they shoot back, right? They have bigger fish to fry in front of them. And so you can beautifully just spam in there with your, uh, you know, 200 bullets, 250 bullets on your scout and just get your shields gr upgraded and we'll probably see two or three of um, our people here in the team have purple shields later on and uh, that is because these shields have this next ev evolution of damage type uh, where if you deal a certain amount of damage you will upgrade your shield. Now for purple it is 750 damage so they're probably not going to hit the red ranks in this game because there's just it's just too safely played right but there's a good chance that they they will hit another 106 damage onto someone all it takes is like two headshots, you know, a couple, a couple of shots with the scout. So I'm confident they're going to nail that. And we have another team, I think another team gibbying in there. So it seems like that team down there definitely in some deep trouble. Okay. 
Someone's destroying the, the door here with an arc star. I mean, it's not super good, but it's also something that, uh, you know, it can definitely hurt you in the long run, not having the line of sight protection from the door. We will see. Um, but I think they're sitting pretty here. They have the caustic for the defensive play, and they have the Gibby to get them out of a Harry situation, and they have the Valkyrie to get them into the next ring. So, once the next ring rolls around, or once something crazy happens, I will tell you guys, but I'm not expecting anything crazy to happen until the ring closes. All right, quick little update. So, the circle is about to move in, and... Uh, we have still same amount of squads in the game. This is <laughs> something that you will never see probably in uh, solo queue. Is 19 squads being still in the ring at round or ring circle three. <laughs> That's pretty insane. And this is a this is the moment of truth where we're probably going to find out how easy these guys are going to have it. Now with the circle moving in. Um, the circle, obviously, we have a little bit of a gamble here for them, whether or not they will be able to keep this position that they're currently in, sitting tight, or if they have to reposition. If they have to reposition, they beautifully have that Valkyrie here, and uh, we just need a little bit more damage, 12 more damage with the Gibby, and I'm actually surprised that the Gibby's not looking for someone to spam a little bit. We have to be, we have to be careful with the line of sights, right? We don't want to get spammed, we don't want to lose anything. However, we obviously we obviously also want to evolve our shields just a little bit. At least, uh, you know, that 12 damage. You see the Caustic is already running a, a an, an evolved shield, which uh, is great. Probably because of his weapon. He is, you know, probably just spamming in there trying to, you know, get some damage in. And, uh, yeah, you know. It, it, it is it is pretty pretty slow gameplay. And this is actually finally where a team died. So it has been it has been a hot minute, and we see the circle did move, which means now they are going to be plotting and they're going to be thinking about what exactly are we going to do now, lads. Um, we can see from the way they're looking, you know, they're kind of scouting out the area and they're ready to boost out. Now, it's always kind of a gamble how early, how late you want to move in. Obviously, not too late, but if you do it too early, people have time to rotate on you and maybe you know you might you might get into a difficult situation die too early stuff like that so you kind of want to sit tight you kind of want to play it as safe as possible but you also want to get that rotation early on because uh, very very important to get a good position especially on stuff like valkyrie because valkyrie has uh, kind of a multiplier for good positions because uh, if you're on the high ground she can drop down she can jetpack back up whereas if you're down below, she's not that good, right? Because she could technically fly up, but technically flying up is not as good as dropping down and being able to fly back up, right? So Valkyrie has something that a lot of other legends don't, and there we go. 16 squads left. And I think this is another Gibby, right? I'm pretty sure that... Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was another Gibby. Okay. So uh, they are talking about the rotations of the different teams, and... It seems like we have the decision to jet the heck out of here as the circle is closing in right now. They're getting out and you see them turn a little bit and not really too many shots at them. However, they're going to jump in here and oh, very interesting. Okay, so they cut it pretty close and they're going to try to land here and probably try to stay up here for the full like 24 seconds that they still have, right? And try to just wait it out a little bit drop into a bubble and then hopefully get into a good position now oh god no he's falling kng vein is falling down to the floor here and this is going to be where it's very very difficult okay they're all sitting on top of each other there is no other team but they have two teams in front two teams to the left and probably all the rest of the teams on the right hand side and you can see all the squads dropping here everyone is dying and we have some beautiful shots coming out from our gibby here and we have them stack on top of each other, perfectly step on top, stack on top of each other and try to protect protect each other and uh, they're protecting each other. There is another team fighting and they are moving up, it seems, and oh, beautiful scout damage, yes. Okay, beautiful, beautiful, okay. And the shield is broken, he is ret retreating, using the line of sights in a very, very safe manner and uh, so suddenly 
we have seven squads remaining <laughs> to what was 19 or no 16 squads when the circle started closing a couple of seconds later it is absolute mayhem we only have squad seven squads remaining and they're going to be fighting for a favorable position here they are probably going to be guarding this rock trying to move in from this rock and uh, kind of scanning out what the other positions are and how they can deal with these positions. Now we see a very, very favorable position back there, right next to the... Oh, very, very bold move. Okay, we're moving in here, claiming this... Okay, claiming this double whammy of a rock and a little bit of a... You know, a little bit of a car here as protection. We see to our... Left hand side, the, the team at the crates is sitting pretty. That is a very scary team. Yeah, the team back there. Those guys are going to be contesting the ring. And uh, those guys are going to be a problem to deal with. Obviously, there is a team that has the absolute high ground in this situation. And uh, that team obviously is also favored. However, that team is currently being pushed and also still kind of fighting, I think. Uh, I, I'm having a hard time <laughs> seeing... No, they're not. Yeah, they are being pushed. Okay, so we see we see them being pushed and, you know, there's a lot of fighting going on. Yes, and the team down below from the containers is moving up and trying to get a push on the high ground here. Very bold move. I personally think I would have maybe waited just a little bit with that. But as the circle is moving in, we see people push and this is a very bad position to be in. Getting spammed on by the scout. Oh, that was a second team at the crates. Beautiful, beautiful scout hits. If you look at the left-hand side, okay, there's another team there, and that team has a Wraith. This team is going to be very dangerous for the circle, because Wraith can extend the survival chances of your team for quite a bit, and, uh, you know, in these end circles, it is the couple of seconds that could matter here. If uh, our heroes don't get the good fights, don't get the good shots, don't get the good grenades, and, uh, you know, we can see everyone trying to eliminate the line of sights. This is very important. This is like a very basic thing. They're not really going to be talking about this. However, you see how they rotate around the rock to ev to to eliminate even the line of sights to the team that they're not peeking, that they're not checking out, right? You will see them move around a little bit and be unpredictable and try to hit some hit some sneaky shots. And uh, now you can see them and you can hear them in the background kind of coming up with a strategy to deal, to deal with all these teams and of course, strategies like this are going to be great, but these strategies are very, very basic, right? Uh, are very, very situational, and you, all you can extract from this is like the basics of, okay, using a caustic goal to push a team, or using caustic together with Gibby to, you know, secure a situation to basically always make it favored towards you, stuff like that, right? Okay, we have a Gibby ult coming out here. Probably pushing that team out or... Okay, there is a bubble coming in. Beautiful damage, though. On, oh, yeah. Beautiful damage onto that team in the... Okay. So, we have a Caustic ult outside on the left-hand side. So, they're... Yeah, they have to rotate to the right-hand side. They're doing that and pushing the team on the high ground. This could be a death sentence. And you see that our team is not very aggressively pushing in there. No, they're trying to get... And equally, okay, so this bubble came out a little bit later, so technically they could try to do the standoff. However, yes, they decide to back down a little bit and just wait a little bit. Let these teams fight on top of each other, and this is the second they third party in and they get the kills. A beautiful movement here and beautiful play, and this is probably, yes, this is where they finish the game. Okay, so this is something that I... I personally find abs absolutely lovely because the the way they played it was very very safe nothing crazy happened right they hit good shots but nothing crazy happened and they just waited and they were very disciplined and just waiting for that uh, for that second right the second to snap the second to push in and even pushing in they they kind of did the call internally to okay let's go back a bit go go back no 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 don't go in yet don't go in yet okay now we can go in right like, these calls are very go going to be very important, and this is kind of what can decide your games. Now, if you found this interesting, I would very much appreciate every one of you checking out my Twitch, where we do these things, uh, we talk about stuff like this, and, uh, you know, play a lot of Apex, and uh, hopefully I will be gone out of gold pretty soon, but currently I'm stuck in gold 3, so not a good time. I will see you guys again probably next week for the second week, second third week 
of uh, playing Apex and playing Apex, doing Apex Grinded, we're going to probably have a look at my own gameplay and have a look at, you know, different things. I wanted to do a short video on aim trainers as well. That is specifically focused on aim trainers. So we'll probably do some grinded for that as well. And with that said, thank you very much for watching, everyone. I will see you guys in the next one. I'm so tired. It's literally two o'clock for me right now. I'm so tired.